Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 31 of Columbia City. We're back for the first episode of our new video style here. Hopefully you enjoyed that intro and hopefully you enjoy the rest of the video here. I think you're really going to like it. Definitely leave your feedback in the comments for anything you might want me to change. But since we worked on the last video, I made this entire neighborhood over here to the southeast of downtown. I filled in a bunch of blocks I really didn't want to fill in on camera because it'd be boring. In this episode, we're going to work on a park and a neighborhood in the sort of empty green area you're seeing on the screen. So let's get started. So we're getting started here by expanding the street that we built a couple of episodes ago, or actually I think it's been maybe 10 episodes, maybe even 15 by now, so not really a couple of episodes. Uh, this was a street we built a protected bike lane on a while back, if you remember that, but now, what we're going to be doing um, here is just basically expanding that with some similar development um, to what we built back then. It's just sort of a gentrified neighborhood where there are a lot of um, people who are maybe working in the tech sector, younger people are living here, um, and yeah, nothing much really to say about this. I will probably just talk quickly about the rebrand as uh, you watch me build this area because we're just expanding what we've already built. So the rebrand, the new video style, um, I'll just go down the line for those who aren't really familiar. First of all, we're going to have a new time-lapse style. You're really going to notice a lot less movement in the time-lapse. It's going to be going a lot slower. Um, it's actually sped up by the exact same amount. It's just slowed down to 10% speed rather than like 15 to 20%. And I'm also trying to move my camera way less. I was going to go even more extreme than this, but um, I think this is definitely a good balance, which makes it pretty easy for me to record. Um, even a little bit easier because it makes it so that I have to be more purposeful about what I'm recording, but um, it's not really, really inconvenient for me. So I, I like it. It makes it a lot easier to watch the time lapse. Let me know what you think. Um, there's going to be no more live gameplay at the end of the video. You're going to see the alternatives that we've got for that. We're basically going to have like ground level shots with game audio. Um, and we're going to have an overview segment that's one big continuous cinematic, uh, which I think you're really going to like. It's, it's, uh, it's sort of like the New Windsor helicopter tour video, but without the sound effects and every single video. So I think, I think you're going to like it. Additionally, we're going to have new music. You probably noticed the intro music is like rock music, not um, lo-fi hip-hop stuff. Uh, we're going to have completely different music, more similar to the music I've used in the past, because um, I was getting a little bit bored of the lo-fi music, and I, I guess it was time for a change, and I feel like this is more energetic and engaging. Uh, and we'll have a bunch of different, you know, sub-genres of rock in here that I can find on Epidemic Sounds, so um, yeah. Let's see what else we're going to have. I mean, we've got the new intro, which I really hope you like. Uh, where that's, you're going to see that on every single video, so you better like it. Um, it's uh, it, I really like it. I, I spent a lot of time on that, getting every single shot just right. One thing I've been doing is I've been adding um, some ground level cinematics. There's a tutorial on YouTube if you want to try to do that yourself as well. It's really like it's simple, but it's also pretty complicated and a little bit time consuming. Um, in some ways. So yeah, just that's uh, that's over on in the description down below But yeah, you'll definitely be seeing more ground level cinematics like that just generally throughout the videos um, I, and Additionally, you're going to have new video graphics like very similar actually more similar than I thought they would be um, To our old graphics, but they're definitely going to be different I'm going to change some colors up and stuff uh, and we'll definitely refine it over time. I think you're gonna like them uh, what else? We're gonna have a new avatar. That's not done yet. I was waiting for the rebrands to, or waiting for the avatar to be done to apply the rebrand and new video style, but it was, um, taking too long, so we're just gonna wait on that and just be fine with not having that for now, especially because I'm sticking with my old logo. I don't really see any reason to, um, get a new one right now. So, yeah, same logo, different avatar. I think you're going to like that once it's done. I'll let you know when it is. And let's see, you're going to have uh, a new cinematic style. I think I've sort of talked about this a lot, but you're going to see cinematics in the middle of the video in just a moment, just like I've done in the past. And you're going to see cinematics at the beginning of the video. After the intro, 
I, I think you're gonna like the new cinematic style. We're also gonna have some music with vocals. Um, in some videos, at least, you'll see some music with vocals at the end of this video, or I guess hear some music. Another thing we're gonna have is viewer polls on like names of places and stuff. Like I'll have you suggest something in the comments uh, and then we'll go for like a, a poll on the two finalists. We'll do that for the Chinatown district in a future video once I get more comments in. Uh, we're gonna have polls on like what to build in certain areas, if we should demolish something, etc. Uh, no poll in this video because uh, I made a decision already on the thing that there was going to be a poll on, but you should see one in, in the next video. Finally, we're going to have a Q&A, so if you want, um, like, uh, we're going to have a Q&A portion, basically, starting pretty soon, so if you want a question answered in the video, um, leave a comment down below with your question, and then tag it with hashtag Q&A, and I should be able to find it uh, pretty easily and included in the videos. So hopefully you're excited for the rebrands. I sure am and so let's get started with the core of the video. If you guys are enjoying and enjoying the I mean, the beginning of those new mid-videos, cinematic sequences like that, definitely leave a like on the video, that'd be highly appreciated. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited for this. I was just getting a little bit bored with the way I was editing videos, and I wanted to be really engaged with my editing process again, and really feel like I was producing like a really, really good video every single time I put out a video, not just for special videos like cinematic specials. One partial downside is videos will come out twice a week, currently on Sundays and Wednesdays, but that could increase again to three times a week, but I was being a little bit inconsistent with that anyway, so maybe we'll be doing better with the more consistent schedule. Anyway, in-game here, we are building the main park that we, that, that is really, yeah, the core of the video. This park is based off of a park um, in Seattle called Cal Anderson Park. Um, it's in a neighborhood that I believe is called Capitol Hill, uh, although I might be wrong on that. But yeah, Cal Anderson Park, really cool park, although I wanted to add a more natural flair to it. So what I'm doing here is I'm placing a pedestrian bridge over what will become a pond. We're going to use the extra landscaping tools water menu to add water to this area in just a moment. Right now I'm actually creating an island in in the middle of the ponds, or at least trying to. I, I've placed a gazebo here uh, just from the vanilla game from the park life update and I'm putting a putting it on a little island uh, and I'm going to connect that island to sort of the main the main pathway so people are able to walk between the gazebo and the shoreline. It's a really cool, tranquil spot in the midst of the crazy urban sprawl of this huge city that we're building. And I'm just trying to get the pathway here just right. Uh, it's, it's like not quite working out. I end up going, I believe, with just normal gravel paths uh, from the vanilla game. Uh, no, I think I, I used the pavement paths, but then I covered in gravel because it looked a little bit better. But yeah, we're going to be using a lot of foliage in, in this park. Like, if you thought we used a lot of foliage in the Chinatown build that we uh, that we did last episode, uh, in, in the gardens that we made, we're going to be using even more in this sort of urban garden area. We're actually going to have even more um, foliage placement in... An episode pretty soon probably like, even more than either of those um, I think you might be th give me a guess in the comments uh, for what you think that might be but it, it's, it's gonna be a cool video but yeah like lots of foliage stuff though I, I can't do this everywhere because it'll just completely lag out my game but when I can in little parts of the city I want to really go crazy with all these awesome uh, grasses and flowers and lily pads and trees um, by people in the workshop who've created just such awesome stuff that is just begging to be used in Columbia City, which is in a city just surrounded by beautiful nature and full of beautiful nature, even within the city, lots and lots of amazing trees and stuff. So I wanna make sure that even the more detailed 
assets like the grasses by Mr. Mason, which I might not normally want to use in a city this big that I'm trying to expand with good FPS. I want to make sure there are spots in the city where you see them used, um, even if it's not everywhere, just so that they get a little credit. Because there's some foliage assets out on the workshop that are just so incredibly good uh, that I haven't used enough here in Columbia City just because I've been afraid of low frame rates. But I want to make sure, yeah, once again, that they're at least smaller parts of the city where you see them. And I'm also using these gray flame detail rocks. And these rocks were placed here by whoever created this park. Like, this park is not just a natural phenomenon. Uh, this was probably a man-made area, so uh, we're, yeah, like, th these rocks were hauled here by somebody. And, however, it's not an overly manicured area, like a lot of parks uh, with, you know, human-created lakes in, like, Southern California might be, where they're just really, really, really manicured and just too perfect-looking to look natural. This really does look genuinely natural, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's like a, an oasis within the city, and I'm using some of Mr. Mason's taller grasses, some padelmo trees, a bunch of weeping willows um, by Mr. Mason, just some amazing, amazing um, foliage assets once again, sort of finding a place in the city to showcase them. But yeah, I, I'm also placing a bunch of just random bushes around the edges here. I'm using some of the padelmo clusters in order to transition out from um, the more natural parts of the ponds to like the pathways and stuff. We're also using some of the, like if you're wondering what those taller pink um, flowers are, those are Padelmo flowers. They're really awesome. And I, I leave a couple of areas bare of, of uh, rocks and grasses and bushes just along the shoreline so people are able to go down to the shoreline and maybe feed the ducks or something. I don't know. Uh, also, if you have a name for this park, definitely leave it in the comments. Maybe we'll have a poll on that um, in the future with some of the names that I like, or maybe there will just be a name that really stands out to me that I, I like enough to just choose outright. But we'll definitely have uh, polls, because there are a lot of suggestions. Like, I, I uploaded the Chinatown video like eight hours ago as of when I'm recording this, and... There are already so many amazing suggestions that I'm going to have to narrow down to two there, but narrowing it down to one on my own would be really hard, so I'm definitely going to have that put up to a poll. But some things won't necessarily always be put up to polls. It's just going to be um, a way, though, for me generally to have more interaction with all of you. Like, I, I really want to make sure that everybody has very direct input, even if they don't comment on the videos, that even people who don't really like to comment, because you don't have to comment. I read all the comments, but you don't have to comment. Uh, I, I still want to make sure that you have a voice in how this city develops, and I think polls are a good way to do that. So now we're continuing the upzoning of this neighborhood that we started in the light rail station video where we built that light rail station right next to where we're building right now. This area is, I mean, I had it as just only single family residential. It didn't look realistic. The transition from the city to the suburbs was too abrupt, but that transition is what we're working on in this video, trying to correct that because I don't want to leave it like it was before. It was really too abrupt of a transition. 
So I'm adding some a, a bunch of buildings here by Smiley's, who's an incredible asset creator in the workshop, who's been making a bunch of content, which is absolutely perfect for the Pacific Northwest. Um, Smiley's, if you're watching for whatever reason, thank you so much for all the content you put out. It's really amazing to see all of these apartments that are just perfect for Seattle or Portland or Vancouver. To be able to place them in, in Columbia City here, like the one I'm placing right now, they really make the theme of, of this city stand out. So thank you so much, Smiley's. Um, I'm having a blast with all of these different assets. Like, you saw me place a bunch of condos in a row before. So at the bottom right of the screen right now, you can see some condos that are actually detached that I placed in a row there. Um, they might look a little weird, right? Well, there are a lot of areas in Seattle where there is this exact type of development, where there is a single-family neighborhood that's only recently been upzones, and there are a lot of these really modern, um, condos, sort of like townhouses in a row. And, um, yeah, they, they look sort of weird and out of place, but it's good because Seattle is doing a good job uh, in a lot of areas with upzoning efforts um, to make sure that um, areas near downtown aren't just single-family residential and um, you're actually able to have some higher densities there. Uh, so right now, I'm actually placing just this older building here on the corner by the light rail line. Um, all the stuff you see on the left of the screen right now, that older street with the gas station and stuff, that's all going to probably be demolished. That's going to be upzoned to much higher densities than it's currently at. Um, and yeah, the, this whole area, I'm just really not happy with how I made it uh, in the past, and it's going to be a pretty core part of the city, so I want to make sure we go back and transition out of the city well. Just like there was that area that I made off camera that I showed you at the beginning of the episode, a lot of areas here that I will be upzoning from the single family residential that they currently are, those areas will probably built, be built off camera uh, in a lot of cases because I don't want to be doing just episodes exactly like this all the time. We'll probably do an episode just dedicated to upzoning, but further than that, uh, I don't think I'm going to do the rest of that stuff on, uh, on camera at least in this neighborhood. But yeah, we've got a lot of parking lots here as well. Not too many, but I want to make sure that we're realistic and do have some level of parking within this city. And I'm just placing some basic props just behind uh, the the uh, like mixed-use buildings that I've placed here. I like to place a lot of mixed-use buildings like that in areas like this because they're a pretty big part of the upzoning efforts of cities like Seattle. Another thing you'll probably notice is these segments in between the cinematics in the middle of the video where we're building stuff are pretty related to each other, as in I'm not just mindlessly putting cinematics that are unrelated to what we're building in the video. I'm recording the video in portions where I do a certain thing and I build a certain area maybe, like this episode is separated by into a bunch of parts, like we had that main street we were finishing at the beginning of the episode when I was talking about the rebrand, and then we built the park, and then we built um, one neighborhood, or one part of this neighborhood rather, and then we've got one more big block to fill in here that is getting its own final segment um, in the video. But yeah, I mean, you might have remembered I used to put those sorts of segments where I'd have cinematics in the middle of the video in my old videos for like New Windsor and stuff like that, but those were not as well planned, like as in I'd record those portions uh, in random places in the map and it just existed to break up the video. I want to make sure that these segments that we have exist to break up the video, but also to really uh, show you the progress as we go through the episode. So you're able to put it in perspective and see we're really making uh, progress throughout a video. Uh, like once we finished the, the lake, you were able to see that sort of breathtaking 
cinematic um, at ground level right over the water Look, looked like somebody was flying their drone just right over the water that was pretty cool but yeah lots more ground level cinematics like that will be in future videos replacing some more of those condos in a row the townhouses um, and a bunch of other buildings really random zoning around here which i think looks really cool uh, largely the zoning in the city is not going to be this random but this area is been upzoned recently and there was a little bit of um higher density stuff right on the main street by by the um by the park but generally this neighborhood in the past has probably been largely single family residential um, so you've got all these new townhouses being built which is pretty awesome and they've got an awesome view of the skyline so those are probably pretty expensive I mean, I'd love to live in one of those, like, be able to look back on the skyline um, on your deck, because, like, yeah, right behind us is the skyline of the city. But, yeah, that's basically it for the time lapse. I'm just going to finish off here by detailing this area where we've got this huge apartment building right next to a nice, small, single-family house which is pretty awesome. I love these zoning contrasts. But anyway, let's take a look at a quick before and after of this. Uh, the FOVs in this recording were a little bit messed up. That'll be fixed in the future, so it shifts position a little bit. But I just wanted to give you the general idea and then not go back and spend an hour re-recording this. But yeah, that's, that's the general idea of what the before and after of this district looks like. I love it. But yeah, we won't be recording in two different FOVs. Usually it should be completely smooth, hopefully moving forward, unless I messed up in the next video too. But yeah, anyway, just trying to stick to really high quality standards uh, as we continue. Anyway, this is what we've been waiting for, the overview segment. This is one of the main replacements for the live gameplay. Right now we're just flying over that main street that we built initially. We've got some new rainbow crosswalks you'll notice, and then some Seattle crosswalks. If you want to grab those custom crosswalks, they're decals you can download. They were made by a viewer named Meep City which are really, really awesome, and I can't wait to continue using them in more detailed areas like this. So definitely check those out. Those are going to be in, in the description um, linked there for you. But anyway, this is the park. I, I love it. This is one of my favorite parts of the city. We've got this baseball field here um, at one end of the park, and then we've got a bunch of paths um, sort of snaking around. I end up going in replacing these paths with some brighter paths simply because these were glitching on one end of the park and sinking down really, really deep whenever I loaded my save. If you have a fix for that, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, look at the gazebo on the island. I'd love to just visit this spot. Really cool place uh, with just an urban oasis within the, the huge city that we're building. Um, and then this is the first area we worked on, the first part of the neighborhood we worked on um, with those modern condos and just totally random um, zoning, which includes mostly newer buildings, some older buildings. It might not be fully realistic, but I don't want to nitpick with buildings here because I just want to expand the city right now and I'll get better at making these these newer neighborhoods as we go so yeah here's the the core of that neighborhood just on this hill here I love working with terrain height differences like this it, it's really really satisfying to just see uh, what this looks like and yeah as you can see this entire neighborhood is totally single-family residential and we're slowly going to be working through that and up zoning it to stuff that's more similar to the stuff you see on screen there but yeah, this is this is what we built this episode. It might not seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but this park is, if you think about it, like a pretty big landmark within the city. It's a, it's a landmark that tourists might want to go to. Yeah, if you've got a name for the park, once again, leave it in the comments, because I want to make sure that it doesn't go unnamed. Pretty big focal point for the city. Anyway, here we are in... In, in, in not not in game this is not live i haven't even stopped recording this audio these are pre-recorded segments which have the game audio because i couldn't remove this from the video these were so awesome to do in game just going around but this means like me recording these in advance and just commentating over them now means that you're gonna get like i think there are 15 of them in a row this is only the second we've got a couple minutes of this which is really cool, because when I when I record live gameplay, I have to move around to all these different positions. And it's laggy, and it's not pretty. 
but now you've got all these picturesque sort of pre-planned shots like I can change the cube map in between shots and I mean you can see it's a little bit laggy like these are going to be the only like actually laggy segments in the video because the rest of the stuff is sped up enough where you don't notice the frame rate which is pretty bad but yeah look at these rainbow crosswalks by Meep City there are a lot of these in Seattle um, and I I, I have them throughout the city, but most of the ones that I have are parallel to the road, the ones by King Leno, which are awesome, but Seattle has a ton that are perpendicular like that. And then these are the Seattle-style crosswalks. There are a lot of crosswalks like this in Seattle, um, and yeah, those are also by Meep City. Those are in the description down below as well, so make sure to grab those if you're building a city sort of like this. And we got a nice rainbow flag on this newer development here, which is also mixed use and we've got a bunch of Mr. Mason's uh, London plane trees which have become like my favorite deciduous tree for high detail areas. I've also got these newer street trees from the workshop that I placed here. I love this protected bike lane. I'd love to ride my bike in this neighborhood. Um, it looks like legitimately safe and like this area was retrofitted from being badly planned to pretty well planned actually. But yeah, I'm going to end it off here. Hopefully you all enjoyed. I really had a blast making this video, and I'm going to have a blast making future videos like this. And this is the quality you should expect to see on the channel moving forward. And it's hopefully going to continue to be multiple times per week. So if you are excited for that, make sure to leave a like on the video. If you don't want to miss any future videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever I premiere a video. The video goes live. Support me on Patreon if you want to get access to the save game and fly around or build or just explore Columbia City. You can get the save game over on Patreon or get early access to videos or your name at the end of the video. Lots of stuff is over there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram for photorealistic screenshots of places like this in Columbia City. Uh, those are in the description down below. But yeah, that's, that's basically it. I'm really loving how Columbia City is turning out. It's really maturing as a city to look like legitimately photorealistic. And if you're curious what Columbia City looks like from above, I'm going to make sure to include a shot like this in every video so we can track our progress. And I can go back to old saves maybe and make a before and after once the series is over. I want to make sure that we track our progress and you guys are able to visualize the city. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you're excited for the new video style and I'll see you next time. Faded back into life.